Hi YouTube, it's Hugh here from Creator Up. I'm traveling right now, I'm in China, Guangzhou, China. It's very beautiful here. A lot of people in YouTube ask me how I quickly transfer footage from my Nikon Key Machine 360 into my computer and then upload on YouTube. It's a pretty straightforward process and I will show you step by step how I do that. So you can quickly bring your camera to travel, edit it and upload it on YouTube. Let's get started. Okay, we are back to our studio. What I'm doing right now is actually opening my key mission and connect it to my phone. Okay, connect it. And tap remote photography and go into the remote control mode. As you see, there's my phone. I know I have a funny smiley face, but as you see, that is actually my phone right here. Um, okay, so before they even actually uh, go out and shoot any video, two things very important. One thing you have to know is it's very buggy to connect this screen you're seeing right now, the uh, app to your Nikon key mission camera. My suggestion is actually when you're outside shooting, turn the airplane mode on to just forget about remote control. Just using the camera. The camera is actually very easy to use when you're not connected to the app. Uh, but a couple of things you need to do before you actually use your camera is have the correct setting. So hit this gear icon and it should bring up the setting and pick the movie right here. Okay, now we're in movie. So first things very important is this movie option. So pick that. As you see, I have option 1920 by 24 frame per second selected. That is the option you should select. Uh, the reason why is uh, the default setting is actually 2160 by 24 frame. So it's 4K option. As you see right here, it's a 4K option. But why not this option? Because most video now they upload on YouTube 360 is actually uh, in a two by one ratio, not 16 by nine. So it's not a 4K ratio. So I'm not sure why Nikon have this option here, but that is the option you should pick, which is not that one, but, but this one. Whoop, I cannot pick it back now. But the 1920 by 24 frame. Uh, reason why is, well again, just, just I mentioned, when you upload on YouTube, you don't need to actually like, cut the video into the correct setting and upload on YouTube uh, and also save a ton of space because it's a smaller file size uh, you don't really need those extra pixels so uh, by picking this option basically save you probably like hours of resizing your footage and upload on YouTube the second very important option let me go back let me go back to shooting option uh, actually pick uh, shooting options right here pick that as you see, like the app is very slow and buggy, so that's why you want to do this pre-selling before you go out and shoot. And you never want to, uh, in my opinion, you never want to connect your phone with your camera uh, while in shooting, especially if you are traveling. Um, it's just a very frustrating experience. For me, I will preset everything. Okay, now we're in here. So as you see here, active D lighting, I turn it on. So that is something that I would suggest you turn on. The reason why is by turning on this, you actually make your footage like more flat and less saturated and capture more information to your camera. So at the pro-production, you can color grade and color correct your footage. Uh, especially in low light situation, this will allow more light coming to your camera and then you can increase the, the lighting in pro-production. So I always color grade my footage. So if you don't color grade, you just up record your footage, upload directly on YouTube. You might not need to turn this on, but my suggestion is just turn it on. So uh, it's just the same principle of shooting in DSLR. You always want to shoot flat, uh, so you capture more information. So in post-production, you can have more room to fix the footage. So these two options I always turn on. So now let's go back to the to my studio and I will show you the rest, how to import footage, edit them and upload on YouTube. Okay, now I am in Adobe Premiere. That is the editing software I use to edit all my video, including 360 VR video. 
So first step is go ahead and drop your footage into your computer. So I go ahead and put my footage in the key emission folder. That is a three clip out from my key mission into my computer. It's very easy because key mission come with an internal SD card. You just drop the footage in your computer. That is straightforward. And then go ahead. Let me delete all this so we have a clean view. Into Premiere. Okay, so just go ahead and drag the three footage into the timeline and then we'll create a sequence for you. And as you see right here, it's already the footage can play in real time. Okay, why? Because first I have a pretty fast laptop. I have the at MacBook Pro 2017 version with the touch bar. So in Premiere, the one thing you, you can turn on is under file, project setting in general, I always use Mercular Playbacks Engine GPU Acceleration for OpenCL. Uh, if you have other graphic card, you might have a Cuba. Uh, for me, it's OpenCL because I have the brand new MacBook Pro with AMD graphic card. So that allow me to play back 4K to 60 footage in real time. And that is a lifesaver in editing. So you can actually watching the action and do edit. Uh, another thing about great about Premiere is you can actually simulate the real VR mode. So in here is this button. If you don't have it, it's a plus size right here. Toggle VR video display. You can just drag it in here. So if you click that, it would turn on VR mode. So look at that. When I pan around the mouse, it just simulates the Google Cardboard view. You turning your head and look around 360 around you, which is really, really convenient when you add. Um, I will usually make the setting exactly the same as a Google Cardboard view. So right, on, right click on the video, right click and VR videos under settings. You make sure your horizontal is 180 and vertical is 90. So two by one ratio. And that is a YouTube default 360 video ratio. So you make that and then you have the same view as I am right here. So you can pan around and look at your edit. So the next thing is actually very easy. Just cut. Uh, one thing I like to do again, this is a travel video is me uh, traveling around Singapore. So uh, all the audio is useless. So I basically select all clip, right click, unlink the audio and video, and I will delete the audio file. I don't need them. And then I have the music track in here. I will basically edit according to the music track, according to the beat. So your video will be more on beat and let the music driving the energy. That is one tip for any travel editing. If you're not talking head, you're not talking, I will always suggest you edit according to music. So go ahead and drag it into the music track and just listen to the beat. And, and when it's a bass job, just go ahead and cut and edit and move. Okay, what I just did here, let, let, let me just show you, go back. So what I do is cut and delete track, delete uh, clip. So what I do is on your keyboard, hit C and bring the scissor tool and it's right on here. Just click your mouse and cut it. And then hit V on your keyboard, click the clip you don't want and hit delete and get rid of it and just drag the next clip and turn into the edit. Again, you can pan around and see what you want your subject to be and just add on here. So it's very easy and simple. Basically just like edit any other video, except this video is in 360. So after you finish editing, okay, now I'm done, right? Go to the end of the clip on your keyboard. Go ahead and hit O, that's the out point. Go over to the front of the video and your keyboard hit I as an in point and I want to render this footage out to YouTube. So in, in Adobe Premiere, it's very, very simple. Just hit File, Export, Media. 
and in here make sure you match source in high bit rate and then your video is already 4k because your footage out from the camera is 4k so the output will be 4k and it's 2 by 1 ratio and then click render and maximum depth and in here in bit rate I usually pick constant bit rate CBR and then in the target I usually pick a hundred megabyte per second uh, you can pick 150 uh, if you have a lot of motion in your video but usually 100 is good enough for me and then your key frame distance is actually 24 frame because right here it's 24 frame per seconds right 24 frame one thing the most important thing actually is check this video is VR yes and this video is a VR video and it's a monoscopical video so when you have that check the metadata is already embedded into the output and when you upload on YouTube or on Facebook uh, they would know that oh this is actually a VR video or 360 video in YouTube if you turn the Google Cardboard option on and you can watch the video in Google Cardboard in Facebook it would just know your 360 video and put it into a 360 view that is saving you a lot of time to output the video and then make it at the 360 by injecting the metadata you don't need to do that anymore with adobe premiere and then just go ahead and export that and then you upload on youtube and share it to your friend and family and enjoy it okay so that is the basic on how to edit video on adobe premiere uh, and upload it on youtube for your nikon key mission 360 or gear or rico fader uh, the only thing different is uh, this is 4k okay so now I want to show you some advanced tips that you can do on your video so one thing is let's say that when in the beginning of the video you don't want let's go back to zero so we set this you don't want your user when open your video this is the first thing they see and, and the first thing they see should be me doing stuff right here right you want to direct users viewpoint how can you do that uh, I usually do that with a plugin by metal skybox uh, right here let's let me find it metal uh, so I will usually drop uh, I will drop a metal skybox rotation spheres onto my clip right here and then go to this clip and in here because it's a monosopical video and and it's correct this is a flat and out 360 video and in here let me turn off the VR mode and in here I want to make sure actually I've got to turn on title save so I know like where this is the center point of the clip rotating a y axis and make sure that that is the first thing I want user to see is actually right here so I'm jumping on the wire and I can walk across it next to the river of Singapore which is very danger kid at home please don't do that if you jump into the river in our country nobody will come save you so don't do that uh, well so now I reset the center point of the video so now turn back on VR mode if you're on zero zero as you can see the first thing you should see it is crazy metal thingy then I am gonna walk across so you pan around and say oh my god there's something that I gonna do that's crazy but you get a point uh, you can change the user's focus attention in the first frame by using this metal skybox plugin uh, one good thing is when you pan that you will not see a steam uh, as you see you don't see a steam the steam a cut line here and if you're using a regular plugin you might see that cut line which is kind of ugly when you put on your Google Cardboard so this first thing I do uh, actually is adjust the starting point of my video the second thing I usually do is as you see the footage is not great I mean it's way better than Rico data and even in some st in my standard it's better than some Samsung gear VR but still it's not sharp enough it's a little bit buried in my standard but I can increase the quality in post production to make it look better uh, the other thing I actually love to use is again let's go to effect uh, metal skybox sharpener 
Uh, one thing I've known uh, I would use is if this is a low light situation, let's say that I am shooting this in a concert. Uh, actually, I have a video and shot a DJ perform uh, with, with my Key Mission 360. Uh, I will post a link below and you can check it out. It's actually look amazing. Key Mission do great in low light, uh, but this is actually well lit, so we don't need to denoise this footage. There's no much, not much noise here, but I will make it more sharp. So what I will do is drop a metal skyboard sharpen, sharpener uh, right on top of the footage. So this is the effect. So what I will do is look at the footage, pay attention. Uh, I will add 30. And immediately you see the building outline is more clear. So if you actually turn this off uh, and make it to 100% quality, And then look at the sign. If I turn it off, very blurry. I actually let's make it 400. So, so you can see what's what am I talking about? Okay. So let's as you see here, extreme Singapore. Oop. See, it's very blurry. But if I turn it on, as you see, it's like now it's crystal clear. In my standard. And then it just make the footage look like Ultra HD and it's way better. So that is the effect I usually add on all my 360 footage if I can to make it even better. The last thing I usually do is color correct. And you can use any other color correct plugin uh, to color correct just like regular footage. Go ahead and just give an S curve. Just increase some contract. As you see now, let's get a good frame. Uh, turn the VR mode on. With it, without it, it's a little bit rush out, right? Remember in the setting, we turn the D lighting on, we give us more space to play around with the color. And with it, I turn the contract on. And you see everything look like better, it's more cinematic. Great. And then I would basically save that. Remember, always save your project. And then go ahead and export that. Make sure export media. And again, go ahead and just do the same setting. Remember that turn the video is VR on, that's the most important option. And just go ahead and render, and then you can directly upload on YouTube and Facebook. So I hope this tutorial will give you some idea and um, and teach you how to actually like edit your video and upload it on YouTube. Again, as I said, I love Nikon K Mission 360. I think it's a great video camera, uh, very convenient to use as long as you turn the airplane mode on. Uh, and then the video capture is actually very very nice and you have a lot of room to do some like color grading in pro production and make the footage look even better so as always if you have any question go ahead and leave a comment below um, i will i will answer as many questions as you guys ask and if you want other tutorial and different aspect how i use this video to make like different kind of footage and also comment let me know what you want to learn and i will make that video for you guys well I will see you next time.